tonight on the diaspora. The Wall versus Haiti. If you have not heard it, the vote is in. The UN Security Council has unanimously voted to sanction Haiti or put a use bandage on the problems of Haiti. The US is at the, the forefront and the other countries march steadily behind. However, China and Russia are working a little slow. To explain what this all means, require a TEDx talk style with none other than Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, the US representative to the United Nations, to have that talk in our exposition piece. In the coming days, the United States will deliver additional assistance to Haiti, including critical medical support. We're also deeply focused on the security situation. Before we get to our main story, here's what's making the news. I'm grateful because I remember the people who came to our aid. I remember the U.S. Army on the ground who helped me go try to dig up people as we were getting in calls. I remember the Dominican Republic who sent over people to help. I remember Israel who sent people over to help. I remember Venezuela and all the other countries who put their hands together to say that we care. I remember. Today we're here in Miami, Florida, standing in front of the Toussaint Louverture statue in this area called Little Haiti, in this neighborhood called Little Haiti. We are gathered today to remember Yuna Dati Noblia, qui a prêté gravé dans la mémoire tout haïtien pour tout temps, c'est 12 janvier 2010. Côté à 4h53 de l'après-midi, il était passé un gros tremblement de terre qui était tué près de 200 000 haïtiens. Diaspora, bon côté pâle, il était ressenti le tout. Comme nous capables, non statue qui non Little Haiti, lui montrer tout ça l'ouverture qui placé en mettant deux drapeaux qui exprimaient la liberté, la mort et indépendance du pays d'Haïti. Seule action je dis hein, que nous poser bon côté diaspora, c'est un moment de silence loin de la terre natale. La seule façon qu'on peut arriver à diriger le pays, c'est la démocratie. La démocratie, c'est la élection. Je ne parle pas aucun côté dans la constitution du pays. Je ne parle pas de côté dans la constitution qui prévoit la transition, monsieur. Bon, nous même qui devons là, ça nous plaît. Élection ou transition Qui ça nous Ah bon. Avant l'assassinat, l'ancien président Jovenel Moïse était entretenu penser ça sous une forme de question. Si moi t'as parti, qui ça nous a fait Et qui est-ce qui peut remplacer Il t'a continué plusieurs fois à poser des questions avant la mort. Ah, ça veut dire. Ah bon, ça veut dire. Dis monsieur, dis 14, 15 nègres. C'est 14 à 15 tours que je fais ici. Pas la veille, tu vois ça as of this week, all 11 and a half million people living in Haiti no longer have an elected official representing them. Haiti, je ne veux dire pas gain aucun élu. Dernier sénateur qui était resté yo et bien mandat yo terminé, c'était mardi dernier. Toute sa qui resté c'est un premier ministre qui pas élu, alors que tout politique là, dans mitan gang qui soit en costume d'affaires ou d'autres qui a promené dans la rue je continue à faire parler de yon dans le pays d'Haïti. En tout cas, monsieur, nous tendons, nous tendons, si je ne parle pas de de bain, nous connaissons nous aimons. Ça qui fait nous riches, ça qui fait nous séparer le pays, à nous, à nous six, sept, chaque temps, au président venu, nous courir de elle. C'est un défaut de l'Haïti. C'est ça qui est juste, qui doit être pour Haïti. 
c'est bon nous petit là et puis malé bon elle est malé nouvelle qui passait dans CBS t'a montré vide politique ça qui en le pays d'Haïti alors que pays ça il retrouve les jours et jeudi sans élu nous devons être président jeudi à c'est ton engagement de gars nous pour nous dire nous pouvoir que nous devons nous tenir pour nous nous devons nous tenir pour nous Uh, the United States, France, and Canada, and others in the international world have been asking for Haitians to come to some sort of broad consensus. Madame Boulevard. We have been united behind a single goal making investments in this country's people and your infrastructure that help put Haiti finally on the path to broad-based economic growth with a more vibrant private sector and less dependence on foreign assistance. October 21st, the UN Security Council on Friday unanimously approved a sanctions regime for Haiti, targeting gangs leaders and those who finance them, in the hope of easing months of violence and lawlessness, which has fueled a major humanitarian crisis. The council, in the twisted sense of wisdom, chose the lesser evil target gangs in rags instead of the all-powerful gangs in business suits. While gangs in rags can hold up convenience store and gas station, the suits are able to hire mercenaries to kill the country heads of state. Taking out a head of state is the greatest threat to democracy than deplorable deprived citizen desperately trying to get the attention of a civil global society. The UN Security Council is that civil society, but instead of uprooting the real cause of Haiti on familiarity with peace and stability, the council takes the use bandage approach. The diaspora and Haitian in Haiti know the destructive outcome to this traditional path. In our examination, we thought it's best to use an exposition narrated by the United States Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield about why such a bandage is needed. Maintenant, la parole aux membres du Conseil qui souhaitent faire une déclaration. Je donne la parole à la représentante des États-Unis. Thank you, Mr. President. We're in the Deep South. I'm in a segregated town and let me thank special in which the KKK regularly would come on weekends and burn a cross in somebody's yard to thank in advance. I'm going to segregate of the international organization. My mother has an eighth grade education. I'd also like to acknowledge and my father was taken out of school in third grade to work to take care of his family. Public and Representative Fuller of, of Belize, who's here on behalf of CARICOM. We look forward to hearing your remarks and your important regional perspectives. Recently, the New York Times published our heartbreaking story on Haiti. It features Christelle Pierre, a civilian who knows the instability and violence that plagues Haiti all too well. Gang members descended on Christelle's neighborhood in Port-au-Prince when she was six months pregnant. And in their wake, they left death and destruction. Her neighborhood was burned to the ground. Her husband was shot in the head and left to burn in the street. Now Christelle and her newborn baby are homeless in a country engulfed in crisis. As she told the Times, and I quote, there's no shelter, no food, no medicine, no work. There's only chaos. Colleagues, if there was ever a moment to come to the aid of Haitians and our need, it is now. 
Faced with extreme violence and instability, Haiti's leaders and people are crying out for help. Haiti's Prime Minister and Council of Ministers, as well as the Secretary General, have called on the international community to address the deteriorating security situation and increase our humanitarian support. In response, our teams are on the ground working alongside Haitian health workers and NGOs to help address the cholera outbreak and assist others in need. And we remain the single largest donor of humanitarian assistance to Haiti. In the coming days, the United States will deliver additional assistance to Haiti, including critical medical support. We're also deeply focused on the security situation. One way we've helped alongside Canada was to coordinate the delivery of vital Haitian government purchased security equipment to the Haitian National Police. That included tactical and armored vehicles and other supplies. This assistance will help the Haitian National Police counter gang violence and reestablish stability and security under the rule of law. And the United States is proactively going after the bad actors. Our new visa restriction policies targets current or former Haitian government officials and other individuals believed to be connected to street gangs and other criminal organizations. There must be consequences for those that support the facilitation of illicit arms or narcotics trafficking. But a problem of this magnitude cannot be solved by one country or even by a handful of partners in the region. It requires a concerted international response. It requires robust international cooperation and it requires urgent action by this council. It is not enough to express our concerns or to condemn the violence. As mandated in the Charter, we need to mobilize the resources and power of this council and the broader United Nations. That is why the United States and Mexico have worked closely to draft two new resolutions, res resolutions we hope this council will unanimously support. The first resolution would impose financial sanctions on criminal actors that are inflicting so much suffering on the Haitian people. It is time to hold them accountable for their actions. It would target those responsible for gang violence, for trafficking arms, for attacking UN personnel, for kidnapping innocent citizens, and for human rights abuses and sexual and gender-based violence. And it would go after individuals blocking Haiti's ports and the delivery of humanitarian assistance to the Haitian people. The UN sanctions regime aims to stop these criminal actors from having access to reputable financial institutions. And it would work to freeze their assets and prohibit their international travel. Additionally, its arms embargo provisions would prevent the direct or indirect supply, sell, or transfer of arms to criminal gangs and their leaders as designated by this council. The draft resolution specifically lists Jimmy Cherizier, also known as Barbecue, as the subject of such sanctions. He is directly, he is directly responsible for the devastating fuel shortage that is crippling the country. By passing this resolution, we would take concrete actions to hold him and so many other violent criminals to account. The second resolution we're working on would authorize a non-UN international security assistance mission to help improve the security situation and enable the flow of desperately needed humanitarian aid. This reflects one of the options that the Secretary General recommended the Security Council consider. This is also a direct response to Prime Minister Henri's and the Haitian Council of Ministers' requests for international assistance to help restore security and alleviate the humanitarian crisis. And we have also consulted broadly with other stakeholders in Haiti, including civil society and the private sector. This resolution will propose a limited 
carefully scoped, non-UN mission led by a partner country with the deep, necessary experience required for such an effort to be effective. At the United Nations and across the United States government, we will work with partners and other council members to set defined and specific parameters for the mission. And the United States will consider the most effective means to directly support, enable, and resource it. This non-UN international security assistance mission would operate under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter, and it would facilitate international support to the Haitian National Police, as well as the Coast Guard. By helping improve the security situation on the ground, the delivery of desperately needed aid could reach those in need and address the ongoing cholera crisis. Ultimately, such a mission will rely on support from UN member states, and this draft resolution explicitly asks for contributions of personnel, equipment, and other resources. This is the moment for this council and the world to step up. To be clear, we are keenly aware of the history of international intervention in Haiti and specifically of concerns about the Council authorizing a response that could lead to an open-ended peacekeeping role. The Security Council and the international community must look at its role differently than it has in the past. We must seek a different course, one that can better respond to the humanitarian and security crisis in Haiti and be able to directly address the needs of the Haitian people. With the dire humanitarian consequences on a level we have not seen previously, we need effective yet targeted international assistance. And that needs to be coupled with support for political dialogue and backed by sustained international pressure on the actors supporting gang activity. This will provide the Haitian people with the breathing room they need, breathing room that will allow them to think beyond survival and focus on charting a better future. Colleagues, a member state has reached out to us, the United Nations, for urgent assistance. Haiti has come to us in a time of need. As Security Council members charged with maintaining international peace and security. It is our responsibility to come together to help restore peace and security for the people of Haiti. We must work with Haiti to reestablish the rule of law in a way that respects human rights. And we must hold those responsible for so much pain and violence accountable. Families across Haiti who don't know where their next meal will come from are counting on us. The humanitarian and health, health workers desperately trying to contain a cholera outbreak are counting on us. And victims of gang violence like Christelle Pierre are counting on us. These two resolutions will help Haiti build a brighter, more secure future. And I ask all of you for your support. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Mexico. Gracias. Thank you, President. Remember, subscribe and become a patron. Help us keep this show going by subscribing to the YouTube channel and by becoming a patron. You can also cash up us at Doracy Republic, R-E-P-I-B-L-I-K. Thank you.